Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. We hope everybody's been enjoying their week thus far, and, and thank Ahaya for allowing us to make it into the Shabbat today. I'm your brother, Zach Wild, and this is your brother, Kasafo, and we are Hebrew Readers Church. We thank you for joining us. May Ahaya be gracious unto us to give us a wonderful lesson today. Um, we do have the uh, series, the men's series, How to Be a Brother, which is the lesson today. Uh, this is the third um, lesson of the series. So if you haven't watched the other two lessons, please go back and check those lessons out. It's very informative for the men and also for the women. So please, women, please be advised to, to watch these lessons as well because it's it, it, it's plenty of information for it, building the household as well as some information that can that can help you as well. Um, with no further ado, Brother Kasso, you got anything? Um. No, praise you, actually. <laughs> uh, all right. You well, caught me off guard. It's okay. <laughs> I is good, man. I is good. <laughs> we do uh, pray that all the, the family, everybody's doing well. We know um, everything that's going on in the world with uh, COVID and uh, the sicknesses. A lot of people are being tested. Elohim has been testing a lot of people. Uh, to to really get in order, so we just pray for everybody, all the body of Yahweh Christ, everybody who's going through afflictions, becoming like that gold that is tried in the fire. Just continue pushing on, continue pushing on, and learning that which you need to learn, and and turning from the things that you need to turn from, so that you can be perfected, because the evil spirits are picking up in these times. And we have to be away from sin so that they, they cannot affect us. So definitely it, it is a time of cleansing for everyone. So everybody just be mindful that we have to endure the trial and stay on the journey and stay on the path unto Yache. Amen. All right. This lesson is for the growth of the body to discuss how men are to operate as believers to be called a brother in truth. Can we start at Titus chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, and verse 6, please? Titus chapter 2, verse 1. But, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, Grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and patience. And we encourage brothers to, when you get into your Bibles, to, or if you have the apps, get the definition of these words and take the time to really understand them and then look at how one is actually performing these definitions or how one can perform these definitions in one's life and in one's walk to ensure that we are doing all these things. These are foundational things pertaining to sound doctrine and how we are to operate. Um, also, we need to also be do this the following. First Peter chapter 5, verse 3. Sorry, that was, I see I made a mistake. It was Titus chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, and now we first Peter chapter 5, verse 3. Neither at being lords over Elohim's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. So for those, the elder, the elder in age amongst us, is this is we to operate as examples to the flock, not being lords and ruling over the flock, being overbearing, for example. Um that's how the elders are to operate. And now for the younger men, Titus chapter 2, verse 6, please. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. This is essential for us to be of a sound mind. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, please. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy, and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. 
So for us as the younger, we are to submit ourselves unto the elders, the rulers whom Yache has placed over us because they have to give account for us. And this would be well for us so that they can do it with joy. It helps give us the understanding of how we are to walk amongst one another. And Peter further edified on it in First Peter chapter 5, verse 5, please. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For Allah resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. And then we see, through the spirit of Allah we are to submit ourselves unto one another. The elder submits themselves unto the younger as being examples to the flock. And then the younger submit themselves unto the elder, seeing as though they have been given watch over our souls and what they are teaching us or what they're exhorting us to do is for our well-being so it's all doing all things in humility amongst one another and that lets us see that pride is what brings the lack of ability to submit one to another humbleness amongst each other leads to peace uh, ephesians chapter 4 verse 2 and 3 please with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering for bearing one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. Only pride can divide the brethren to bring contention amongst us. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 10, please. Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well advised is wisdom. In chapter 20, verse 3. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool would be meddling. So we see that while being well advised in the law, there would be wisdom amongst us to keep us on one accord. And being men seeking to be in the honor before Allah, Hayim, we, it is it's an honor for us to cease from strife. So when something does arise, our, our goal is to bring peace. But if we are walking foolishly, as in the world, they will, they will be meddling, seeking to create issues or looking for faults to set their problems amongst one another. But we seek not to be fools, so let us be circumspect and well advised in the fruits and in the law, so that we may be of one mind. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 17, please. See then that you walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Yeah. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. This is a sense of us to know what the will of the Lord is. This is why we have to learn the commandments and the fruits to help our relationship with the Lord and with one another as well. And also to keep on one accord of being of the same mindset by precepts. The law and the testimonies, that's our objective medium to keep us on one accord at all times. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25 and verse 15. This is in building relationship with one another and walking on one accord, knowing what the will of the Lord is. Truth is essential to reign amongst us, as we know from Psalms chapter 15, that he that speaketh truth in his heart shall dwell in Allahim's holy hill. So it's important for us. Can you read that verse, Ephesians 4 and 25, please? Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. This is essential to be brethren, to be family, to have truth amongst one another and there's a way we ought to speak the truth as we're exhorted in chapter 4 verse 15 of ephesians please but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even christ so that truth in love is helping us grow up into christ together as being members one of another lying to a person actually shows we hate them 
So we have to be mindful to stay in love by being honest and sincere with one another. Can you read Proverbs chapter 26, verse 24 to 28, please? He that hateth the symbolist with his lips, and layeth up deceit within him. The word dissemble means to conceal one's true motives, feelings, or beliefs. So that shows there's hate within us if we're dissembling or concealing, not being simplistic and guileless toward our brother or sister. And what we're holding on within us, the issue that we really have that we're holding on to, the scriptures show that we're laying deceit within ourselves. Continue, please. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. And this is showing Allah Hayyam seeth the heart that we may hide from man. We cannot hide from Allah Hayyam. Continue, please. Whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. This lesson, now we see that we can be honest and speak truth in love with one another and find favor in the sight of the congregation, or we can speak fair and we're still walking that deceit, having issues within, and eventually Allah Hayyam is going to show our wickedness before the whole congregation. So there's, we can do things in humility and be accepted or let pride enter in and seek to deceive ourselves and others, and Allah Hayyam will bring it out before all. Continue, please. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. All right. Can you please? A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. This is the key verse to see that lying actually shows we hate those that we're afflicting by it, because by lying to the person, being deceitful with them, we're actually afflicting them. All right. May we be mindful to speak truth in love and not lie or be deceitful toward one another. In this walk, it takes time and attentiveness to make a true brother and a friend in the faith. Can you read Sirach chapter 6, verse 6 and 7, please? Be in peace with many. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. We have to be mindful. You don't open your heart to every man. Have one counselor in a thousand. All right, there's a preset for that, but I forgot it at the moment. Continue, please. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. It takes time to learn a person. Hence, we can't be hasty when learning someone. Have to give people opportunity to show where they're at. Um, Paul speaks of this uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 24 to 25, please. Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. As Elohim said, the, the person, the lying person, their, their wickedness is going to be shown before the whole congregation. So there are some who you can tell they're not in the right place and they're going where they're going. And then there's some, they may seem fair and speak well and things that seem nice at first, but after, as you get to know them, you start to see what's really going on. So I have to be patient. That's why it's not good to be hasty to credit him, but prove a friend first to see who their, what their real intent is and who they really are. Continue, please. Likewise, also, the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. When walking in the will of the Lord, they that are otherwise, they cannot be hid because if you're doing the right things and you understand the commandments and the fruits of the Spirit, it will help you identify what's going on around you very well. Continue in Sirach chapter 6, verse 8 to 14, please. For some man is a friend for his own occasion and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. Please. And there is a friend 
who being turned to enmity and strife will discover that reproach. That's why you don't, that's why I warn counsel in a thousand, by opening your heart to every man. Continue, please. Again, some friend is a companion at the table and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. Amen. But in thy prosperity, he will be as thyself and will be bold over thy servants. Amen. You have to watch out for that. Yes. If Continue, thou, please. If thou be brought low, he will be against thee and will hide himself from thy face. Separate thyself from thy enemies and take heed of thy friends. A faithful friend is a strong defense, and he that hath found such a one hath found a treasure. It is a treasure and defense to have one because in adversity, is going to be the in the adversity to come. It's going to be essential to have a faithful friend and brother. Can you read Proverbs chapter seventeen, verse seventeen, please? A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Okay, we see that when we find that true friend, being after having experience together in the faith, they're going to love you through it all, through the ups and the downs, and they'll be there for the tough times to come. And the tough times that are here. Can you, Sirach chapter 6, verse 15 to 17, please? Nothing doeth countervail a faithful friend, and its excellency is invaluable. A faithful friend is the medicine of life, and they that fear the Lord shall find him. Notice, they that fear the Lord shall find him. Allah I has to bring that about to develop that relationship, develop the person so that they also may be prepared for that relationship as it takes both being in the law to be true friends. Continue, please. Who so fear of the Lord shall direct his friendship aright? For as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. There we see, love the Lord, I mean, love thy neighbor as thyself. That commandment is one of the great commandments that will help us develop a good, proper friendship amongst brethren. We see how learning and walking in the fear of the Lord helps us direct our friendship in the right direction. Also, walking in the ways and teachings of the Lord keeps us to be of the same mind with no divisions. Can we read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, please? Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord, Yahshua Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. This is what we must do as brethren, come together on one accord. As brethren, there should be no difference in doctrine, no difference in understanding and application of the scriptures. Because we have to be of the same mind and the same judgment because there's one spirit and there's one Yache Christ that's bringing us all together. So communicating among brethren is important to make sure we are on the same page in doctrine so that we may be true brethren. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11 and 12, please. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect and be of good comfort. Be on one mind. Live in peace, and the Allah of love and peace shall be with you. Amen. As we know from being perfect means to be sincere. As we talked about in lessons before, I think the name of the lessons was like, can we be perfect or we can be perfect? That would be good to understand being perfect. And finally, in verse 12, please. Greet one another with an holy kiss. This is what we are to do. Those of you who had the experience of being in the Eastern cultures, you know, they greet each other with a kiss on the cheek. As is fitting for the righteous. Now, when issues arise amongst brethren, 
we who ensue peace should be able to be reconciled through the fruits of the spirit, knowing that we are striving for the same goal. Uh, first Peter chapter three, verse eight to 11, please. Finally, be all of one mind, have a compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Mm. Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrariwise blessing. Knowing that ye are, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that should inherit a blessing. So we see how to love his brethren is to be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil, railing for railing, but contrarize blessing, knowing that we are all seeking to inherit a blessing. Continue, please. For he that will love, excuse me, for he that will love life and seek good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. It's essential for us to guard our tongue in order to be a true brother. This is very important for us. Continue, please. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Amen. Continue. Also, can you read Philippians 2 and 12? Yes. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This is essential for us. We need to eschew evil and do good and seek peace and ensue after it while working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We work out our own salvation, not counting ourselves to have already made it, confessing our faults, comparing ourselves unto the end goal of Christ, not comparing ourselves to each other or another because it's pride that ins inspires the looking at another brother to assess oneself. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, please. For we dare not to make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Amen. That's not the way to go. That's not what we are called unto. Humility is key for us. Can you read Galatians chapter 6, verse 3 to 5, and then verse 7 to 8, please? Galatians chapter 6, verse 3. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Man, that's why we don't make out, we dare not to make ourselves of the number to act as if we're the 144,000 or we're someone special. We know that this is a journey and we are hoping to be counted worthy to stand before the Son of Man. Continue, please. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. And this is why we don't compare ourselves amongst ourselves. We're proving our own work, examining our own selves to see, are we meeting the standard of Christ Yache? And if we, if there is something that's according to the standard, we rejoice in ourselves, and it's not actually rejoicing about us, but we're rejoicing in who's working in us. Yache Christ, the hope of glory, that our praise is in him. All right, and we don't look at something another does as if it's some glory um, of ourselves. What others do, we praise Yache for what he does in them as we continue to look at ourselves and look for something praiseworthy that he's doing in us. Continue, please. Galatians 6 and 5. For every man shall bear his own burden. We all have our own journey, our own walk in this fight. Continue, please. Galatians 6 and 7. Be not deceived. Elohim is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. 
what we sow in our heart, we're going to reap it in our life. Continue, please. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Those that dichotomy is very simply if we sow the lust of the flesh within us, if that's where our thoughts and our mindset is in the lust of the flesh, we are going to be, we're going to die. But if we sow the fruits of the spirit, have our thoughts according to the fruits, that's going to bring us unto life. And this is essential for us. As Testament of Levi said in chapter 13, verse 6, can you read that, please? And sow good things in your souls that you may find them in your life. But if ye sow evil things, ye shall reap every trouble and affliction. So you see how what's going on within us can affect our everyday life. Trouble and affliction can come upon us just from having the wrong mindset. Thinking things that are not according to the fruits of the Spirit can lead us to trouble and affliction. And knowing these things, let us be mindful to do the good and think the good. All right, continue in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, please. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If we faint not, we have to continue, as Brother Zachary exhorted in the beginning, we have to continue in the fight and not faint, as we're going to get shown things that we're not doing right, or hidden things that we didn't realize we were doing wrong. Yet, there was a reason to rejoice because we've been shown something else to bring us closer unto our Lord. So let us not faint. Continue, please, brother. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Amen. Let us take this opportunity today, while it is called today, and do good unto all, and especially to the brethren in the household of faith. We do good unto all men, knowing that it is Allah Hayyam in us who prospers us to do so according to his will. Can you read Philippians chapter 2, verse 13 to 15, please? <clears throat> for, it is, for it is Allah Hayyam which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Man. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless. The sons of Elohim without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Now, here in the world, this is how we are to be blameless and harmless as the children of Elohim without rebuke, doing all things in concord and love and simplicity. Now, in the world, how we are to be, Paul exhorts us. Um, can you read Colossians, I mean, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9 through 11, please. All right. I run unto you in an epistle not to com company with fornicators. Yeah, not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must ye needs to go out of the world. We can't not. I mean, be in peace with the people in the world uh, because th that's the world is going to continue in that, and we just have to be blameless in the midst of it, shining as lights through Christ Yache. Continue, please. But now I have written unto you, keep, excuse me, but now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man is called a brother, be a fornicator or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such a one, no, not to eat. So for brothers who call themselves to be believers in Christ Yache, if these struggles be found in them, when we talk to them about it, and they're not making the changes, we're not to eat with them. This is, we're not to keep feast with them. And it's not for the sake of shunning them because we don't care about them, but it's actually because we want them to make change and hoping that they'll be ashamed and turn around and do the right thing. Uh, as 
Can you read Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, please? And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Right. Yet yeah, count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. So then we see the separation from a brother that's not walking in the right ways, not to look at him as an enemy, but in hopes that as a brother, be admonishing him, he will be ashamed and make the changes that he needs to make in his life. Now, for the ones that are contentious and continue in the wrong path, can we read Titus chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, please? Uh, is it, can we get a uh, clarification on this real quick before we go on so that people have an understanding? Um, we're specifically talking about brothers in the faith right now. We're not talking about somebody who's of the world and you're going to do like a, you have a business meeting and you have to sit there and eat with them or something like that. Like, I, I want to... Right. I want to make sure people understand before it gets take it gets misconstrued. It. Oh, thank you. Because yeah, Paul was saying he wasn't saying in, in verse five. I'm sorry, in chapter five, verse ten, Paul said, "Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then you must needs go out of the world." So he was talking about. In verse 11, but now I write unto you to not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater and so on. Right. He's talking about people in the faith of Christ, not people in the world. All right. This is how we have to deal amongst the family, the household of faith. All right. Um, well, we continuing. Thessalonians. We in, um. No, no, no. In Titus chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. Okay. This is looking at um, for the ones when dealing with men that are men or that are called brothers or we think they're trying to be become brethren. And we see that they're walking in the wrong direction and they're continuing in it after being admonished as a brother. Um, Titus 3, verse 10 and 11, please. All right. A man that is an heretic. After the first and second admonition, reject. And it's for reason that the brother has to be rejected. Continue, please. You want to get understanding what heretic is? I know a lot. Ah, uh, please. Uh, Titus three and ten. All right, heretic is G one forty one. Uh, a, a schismatic uh, heretic. Uh, while you look that uh, the English definition is a person believing in or practicing religious heresy. Right. So they're not walking. They believe something that's contrary to sound doctrine or they practice something that's contrary to sound doctrine. This is why we're all supposed to be studying what the will of the Lord is and the fruit so that we may all be on the same page to know it. And if a person that, when you continue heretic, I think it says more there, sorry. Okay. Uh, Titus chapter 3 and 11. Knowing that he is such, excuse me, knowing that he that is such is sub subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. Let me see the person, that, that schism that they're bringing, they're staying in it. They're not willing to sit and, ha and reason together to ensue peace, but they have their doctrine that they're walking in, though it's not sound according to the faith. With those, when we see that they're subverted and doing it to themselves, we have to reject them so that there be no uncleanness amongst us. In the faith, we have to use discernment on how to interact with brothers, depending on where they are in the faith. Can you read Jude chapter 1, verse 20 to 23, please? But ye, beloved, bending up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying to the Holy Spirit, praying in the, in the Holy Spirit, excuse me, 
keep yourselves in the love of Elohim, looking for the mercy of our Lord Yahweh Christ unto eternal life. And staying the commandments and the fruits. Keep ourselves in the love. Continue, please. And of some have compassion, making the difference. And others, Continue, please. And others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. So you see, when we went here to see how there are different ways how we have to interact with certain brethren. There are some men who they show that they're not brothers by the heresies and unwilling to turn away from it. Those have been subverted and they're doing it to themselves. We have to reject them. But then there are brothers who are just struggling to learn and grow. These we have compassion, making the difference between the two. And others, they're, they're really having a tough time and you have to pull them out with fear. Like, hey, brother, that's, you have to be more assertive to help them with certain things, knowing that they are, there are certain areas where they're weaker in and Allah might have given you more strength to overcome. And this is how having that one counsel in a thousand, talking to each other about things, it helps to pull one, get pulled out of the fire. There may be an issue you may be having. You go talk to your brother about it to help you have the right mindset, knowing that it's a weak area for you. And he'll tell you what you need to hear for you to stop what you were thinking or come out of the feeling you are walking in. This is what this is. This is how, why it's important for brethren to communicate amongst each other and have that environment of being able to have open dialogue and come to common understanding. Um, I want to give understanding on Titus 3 and 10 on, on some of it, because we, we've been going into um, people that like to call schisms and contention. Um, okay. It said the man that is a heretic after the first and the second admonition reject. A lot of times that person is the person that wants to cause division. He comes and he and he comes with different doctrines or false doctrines, trying to cause that division, or trying to be a one of the things was he would um, people weren't try, weren't weren't supposed to be a, 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 a what is it over the flock? What what I forgot the name. Of the um, being lords, being right. lords over the flock. Right. He wants to have dominion, like some authority over the flock. Right. So a lot of times he'll come with these doctrines so that he can have dominion over the flock and try to cause the, 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 the congregation to, to be split. And a lot of times that happened, even in the scriptures, even in the Acts, um, there would be that person who would come and cause the dissension or the schism in the churches, and the church would end up being divided. It happened amongst the Corinthians, the whole letter of Clement was uh, discussing how envy and jealousy caused that division amongst them. There's someone bringing in heresies. So you got to be very careful with that. And also, it leads people away from the from the gospel of Messiah. It leads people away from the simplicity of Christ. And a lot of times that that schism or, or that, that um, heresy that they're walking in usually stems from their own desires or their own lust, or something that they can't get over according to the scriptures. So nine times out of ten, you probably already reasoned with them according to that, to those scriptures, and they won't leave it alone, even though it's not sound doctrine. So um, those are the things you have to be very, very careful about, um, even being within the church itself, because... It's the flock that's getting attacked. The wolves always attack the sheep. So this is why everybody has to be firm in the faith, firm in doctrine, so that the wolves can attack. Because if there's one that's weak, he's going to attack the weak one. So this is why we all have to study. We all have to read. We all have to learn. We all have to understand doctrine. We all have to understand scriptures and precepts and, and actually aligning scripture to write according to the holy records so that nobody is without. Amen. 
That's, that's why they said, speak, speak ye the same thing and be of the same mind and of the same judgment. So that nothing can divide us because we're all one in Christ. Amen. Now, can you read First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14? This is still touching on how to deal amongst the different brethren, having compassion towards all and making a difference between the difference in the different situations that people are in. Uh, when you're ready, please. First Thessalonians 5 and 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. So in patience toward all and compassion, you warn them that are unruly. You see a brother doing things that are not well according to the doctrine, give them a warning. And of course, that's done in love because we speak the truth in love toward one another and comfort the feeble-minded, those that may not be as strong-minded and support the weak. Stay encouraging for the brethren. All right. And in that patience that we don't grow bitter towards one another, but always be long suffering. And that's why first Thessalonians chapter five, verse 15 admonishes us as continue, please. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Is that we, that again we see that not rendering evil for evil because the fruits of the spirit will keep us when there may be a, a time where a person may fall into the lust of the flesh and react a certain way or act a certain way by staying in the fruits not rendering evil back that is going to help us continue to follow that which is good and bring us back on one accord by the spirit now sadly offenses must come but there's a proper way to go about making peace among the brethren in the faith. Can you read Luke chapter 17, verse 1 to 3, please? Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for That's him nice. that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, and that he should offend one of these little ones. We have to be mindful not to offend the little ones in Christ, which are believers. Continue, please. Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. We must talk to our brother peaceably when rebuking him to ensure the works of the flesh don't arise in us and defile our hearts. Can you read Testament of God, chapter 6, verse 3? Love ye therefore one another from the heart. And if a man sin against thee, cast forth the poison of hate and speak peaceably to him. And in thy soul hold not guile. That's essential for us. Can you continue back to Luke 17 and 4? And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, that shall forgive him. Amen. And then now let's look at the other ways he may react when you tell him about his trespass. Testament of God, chapter 6, verse 3 to 7. Please. And if he confess and repent, forgive him. But if he deny it, do not get into a passion with him. Least catching the poison from thee, he take to swearing, and so thou sin doubly. And though he deny it, and yet have a sense of shame when reproved, give over reproving him. For he who denieth may repent, so as not again to wrong thee. Yea, he may also honor thee, and fear, and be at peace with thee. And if he be shameless, and persist in his wrongdoing, even so forgive him from the heart, and leave Elohim the avenging. Talking things out as brethren is great for building relationships. Can you read Sirach chapter 11, verse 7, please? Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. Understand first, and then rebuke. 
is essential to understand first and then rebuke because Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13, please. He that answered for matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. And can we continue in Sirach chapter 11, verse 8? Answer not before thou hast heard the cause. Neither interrupt the men in the midst of their talk. That's so why when we're talking amongst one another, we have to let each other finish what one is saying before we speak. That's how we are called to deal amongst one another. Sirach chapter 19, verse 13 to 17, please. Right. Excuse me. So right chapter 19, verse 13. Admonish a friend. It may be that he has not done it. And if he have done it, that he do it no more. Admonish thy friend. It may be he have not said it. And if he have, that he speak it not again. Admonish thy friend. For many times it is a slander, and believe not every tale. There is one that slippeth in his speech, but not from his heart. And who is he that hath not offended with his tongue? Admonish thy neighbor before thou threaten him. And not being angry, give place to the law of the Most High. That law we have to give place to is Leviticus 19, 17, and 18, please. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am Ahia. And in that love, we are to... Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. Put on, therefore, as the elect of Elohim, holy and beloved vows of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. For bearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. We are to be ready to forgive in the first place. Hence, if one is angry, we must wait before speaking. Psalm chapter 4, verse 4, please. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Cello. This is when if we're upset, go sit down somewhere until you get to the right mindset to be able to have a conversation with a brother. When in the right place, then we get more understanding on how to bring a fault to a brother and what to do if he will not repent. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 to 17, please. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as heathen. Excuse me. Let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. And that's what God was admonishing, that if he be shameless and persist in his wrongdoing, even so forgive him from the heart and leave the Elohim, the avenging. That's what public heathen man and publicans, Elohim judges, we, that's, there's nothing to say to them. When that's why we leave it in Elohim's hand at that point. There are times when we have to accept that a person is not a brother in truth and must be treated as a person outside of the faith and leave it in the hands of Allah Hayyam. Yeah, so hopefully we understand that. Now, if a brother falls and he gets into his feelings about his fall, we have to restore him in meekness because we're in the same battle to make it unto the end. Can you read Galatians chapter six, 
verse 1 to 4, please. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are in, ye which, excuse me, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Amen. We have to stay in the fruit so that we don't get into a trespass ourselves. Continue, please. Bear ye one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. When we look at each other in compassion and see another's problem as our own, that keeps us in love toward one another. Continue, please. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. If we look down on the issue another brother's having, that's showing that pride is leading us away to deceive ourselves. Continue, please. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he, excuse me, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. That lets us know, when it comes to being judge, judging, uh, we should not be judgmental of the next man and the burden that he's facing. But if we're going to judge, we should be judging ourselves to see and prove on our own work, to ensure that we are not deceiving ourselves and keeping our eyes upon what what's going on within us. As we discuss, we don't compare ourselves among others or judge others because it's unwise to compare ourselves amongst ourselves, knowing that we have to look within ourselves. Therefore, let's look at Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 15, please. I mean, chapter 13, verse 5 to 7, please. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your, know ye not your own selves? How that Yahweh Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? Essential for us. Prove our own selves so that we be not reprobates. Continue, please. It says, Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. So the only way you can examine yourself is by the law and the fruits of the Spirit. So you, just like Brother Costello was saying, we can't compare ourselves amongst ourselves or else we're unwise. So you can't say, okay, look what that brother's doing. I'm doing that too, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing well. No, you have to say, okay, according to the law, let me examine myself according to the law. What does the law say? Let me, examine, let me examine myself according to the fruits of the Spirit. Let me examine myself according to the works of the flesh and see if the works of the flesh are operating in me. These are the things that we, this is how we prove ourselves. Prove your own selves. So that's how you prove yourself if you're walking in those things. If you're walking in the good things of Elohim. Amen. And if you're still working, if you're still walking in the works of the flesh, you're proving yourself that you still have work to do. Right. Okay. Right. Know ye not your own selves? Right. Say so like you you don't know yourself? How that Yahweh Christ is in you? How that Yahweh Christ is in you except you be reprobates. Okay. So you don't know that Yahweh Christ is in you unless you're examining yourself by what he told you to examine yourself by, by the by the law, by the fruits of the Spirit. And if you don't know the law and the fruits of the Spirit, he said, you're reprobates. That means that you didn't endure the trial. You didn't learn that which you were supposed to learn. Because you can't see Christ in you unless you understand the law and the fruits of the Spirit, because that's what Christ walked in. And that's what he operated in. So if you're missing those things, you're missing Christ altogether. Second uh, Second Corinthians thirteen and six. Amen. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. 
because we're examining ourselves to make sure iniquity, that secret fault doesn't stay, that we acknowledge it, confess it, and move forward to overcome it. Now, Continue, I, please, brother. Now I pray to Allah that ye do no evil. And in doing so, in doing no evil, what must we do? First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, please. But I keep under my body and bring it into and bring it into subjection. At least that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. In ourselves in subjection, keeping the lust of the flesh subdued within us. This is to make sure that we're doing no evil, that we don't get cast away. And that's what Paul was referring to in Galatians 6 and 5, that every man shall bear his own burden. Now, in regards to the brothers, as we're growing together, stay objective about others, which is a work of simplicity, so we do not become judgmental. Can you read Sirach chapter 9, verse 14 and 15, please? As near as thou canst, guess at thy neighbor and consult with the wise. Be objective about others rather than be judgmental. <clears throat> Continue, please. Let thy talk be with the wise and all thy communication in the law of the Most High. That's why we have to learn the scriptures for us to dwell as brethren. We need that we should all be learning the law and the fruit so that when we talk amongst each other, it's according to the law. It's in the law. We're discussing things not from our own perspective, how we feel about what the law says this. And, you know, according to the fruits, we should that. Our discussion should be along those lines so that we'll ensure that peace reigns amongst us and wisdom abounds in the midst of us. Now, and in doing so, that will be profitable for us as brethren. And then touching back on not being judgmental towards one another. It's the Lord who judges all things, not us. Can you read First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15, please? <clears throat> but he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is just of no man. He abides in the fruits of the Spirit in his judgment for us to know how we ought to abide in the fruits at all times. He reads Psalms 103 and 8. Please. I am merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. That's how he is so that we may see that's how we ought to be at all times. And continuing in 1 Corinthians chapter six, chapter 2, verse 16. For who have known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? This is why we are not to be judgmental, because we don't know his mind and what he has in store for a person. Because we talk, a person may look like they're in a certain case, but it may just be their, their, their season of growth that Allah is bringing them through. And he's going to turn them around. Hence, we stay objective about others. Guess at thy neighbor and not be condemning like, oh, he's finished. He's done. He's not going to make it. You know, that's condemning. That's being judgmental of a brother. Instead of, I help him. Maybe he doesn't understand at the moment. You know, that would be objective and guessing rather than becoming a judge of the person. And in the mindset of Christ, we are commanded to Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 to 5, please. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. If we, have, if we have compassion toward others, there'll be compassion toward us. And being objective helps stay in the spirit of compassion rather than being insensitive or condescending and, and judging a person. And again, judging is to condemn, not to admonish. Because as brethren, we have to not suffer sin upon our brother and rebuke our brother. 
so that they may turn away and also admonish them as brethren. But we cannot look at them to speak on them as if they're, they're, what they're doing is like they're done for. But that will cause us to be judged ourselves. And the staying objective is key because we're not focused. That shows we're not focused on what our brother has going on. But we're really focused on our own walk. Like, oh, I don't know what that's what I have my own thing to focus on. So I don't have time to be judging my brother. That's why the scripture said, guess at thy neighbor. And that will help us because Yache said in Matthew 7 and 3, continuing, please. And why beholdest thou the mote in thy brother's eye? But consider if not the beam that is in thine own eye. Right. It takes time to look over what he has going on and not stay focused on what's within us. Right. Continue, please. Or how would thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Right. Because... When looking over at him, it in this case, it isn't that the brother sinned against us? It's his own issue that he's having. And we're stepping out or focusing on ourselves to try and go help him when we have our own issue to overcome within us. All right. Continue, please. Yeah, you're actually putting in work. You actually went over, stop, stop examining yourself. You went over to your brother. Stop putting in work trying to help him get the beam, get the, the mode out of his eye. You over there working hard. Thing. You got a whole beam in your eye. Right. <laughs> That's what it does. So you're going hard on your brother. And, and, and let's put this in, in layman's terms. Your brother got an issue. You don't want to look at yourself and look at the issue that you got going on. But you're, you're, you're going real hard on your brother, telling him everything he got going on. And then you got a beam in your eye. You got you got you got some 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 skeletons in your closet. But you trying to be seen in the sight of men, right? But you will expose everything that's going on with your brother. Everything that you can see, trying to trying to say you're trying to help them. And that's exactly why the next verse says, "Thou hypocrite." Because you're trying to cleanse everything. You're acting like you're trying to cleanse everything from your brother, but you're not trying to cleanse everything from yourself. All right. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thy own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. And that is, is essential for us because... That hypocrisy of not looking at myself first and dealing with the issue I have before trying to help my brother, if I don't deal with my own issue, all the words I'm talking to him is going to fall to the ground when he realizes I have the same issues or issues that I need to be dealing with. That hypocrisy is going to turn him away. That's why Proverbs 11 and 9 says, a hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. Because you're talking and not doing. Well, even even in the case, because you have that those that beam in your own eye, you can't rightfully divide the word of truth. You can't rightfully you can't rightfully walk to even help your neighbor discern good and evil. That's why I said, once you get the beam out of your own eye, then you shall be able to see clearly. Because first off, your your vision was, was skewed based off of your iniquity. Right. So you were leading your brother away, actually, more than helping him by not cleansing your issue first. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the wisdom of Allah I am in me, right. seeing as though I had my own issues I was dealing with to be able to see. I can't see myself clearly, so how can I see what that brother has going on? All right. And then you, let's say your issue was anger. And let's say you didn't want to deal with that anger that was in you. And you're over mm -hmm. here, you see what's going on with your brother. Your brother's having whatever issue he's having. 
But yet, when you go over there trying to help him, you're helping him in anger. All right. <laughs> All right. Like, then I'm everything I'm telling him, it ain't right. Right. You're literally leading your brother off. Or you're making him, or you're turning him away because he's seeing anger in you and you're trying to correct him and you're getting frustrated or whatever the case is. You're leading your brother, right. you're pushing your brother further away. Right. Or your sister. And that brings us right into the leaven of the Pharisees. Saying and not doing. The hypocrisy. This is key for us to avoid, brothers and sisters. Yache warned about it. Touching it. Can you read Luke chapter 12, verse 1, please? Sure. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, and so much that they trod upon excuse me, and so much that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. It's, it's essential for us to deal with the issues we have within ourselves before trying to go out of our way to tell somebody about the issues that they're having. If a brother has not trespassed against us, we ought to let, let deal with the beam in our own eye and continue growing ourselves so that we may be able to see clearly so that later on after we've gotten it together, then we can actually go talk to that brother in righteousness and help him get the beam, the moat out of his own eye, right? This is walking in patience toward one another. Knowing that we all have our battle, our own burden to bear. And in the realm of bearing your brother's burden, though you may see somebody doing wrong or doing something that they should change, that a part of bearing that burden is being long suffering, like, hey, Lord, help him. And just continue moving forward, looking at ourselves, waiting as we get it together. May the Lord turn the brother's heart at his time. And if the Lord wills that we be used when we have it together, may the Lord give us the words and the wisdom to help the brother in the little area of growth that he has. <laughs> All right. Can you read Proverbs 11 and 9, please? And hypocrite with his mouth dest destroyeth his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Now, uh, instead of being a hypocrite, walking in knowledge of the Lord, that is going to bring deliverance. So we have to seek the knowledge of the law to be delivered from hypocrisy by walking in the fruits that come from keeping the law and engender the fruits of the spirit. Can you read Sirach 32, verse 15 to 17, please? He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith, but the hypocrite will be offended thereat. Amen. They that fear the Lord shall find judgment and shall kindle justice as a light. A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. This is, we have to be mindful of this when in our self-assessment. Yes. If we're finding an excuse to not do what the law says, or to justify when we haven't done what the law said, or walked according to the fruits, that's showing we're still sinful men. All right? Continue, please. In Sirach chapter 1, verse 27 to 29. Right. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction, and faith and meekness are his delight. Yeah. Distrust not the fear of the Lord when thou art poor, and come not unto him with a double heart. Be not an hypocrite in the sight of men, and take good heed what thou speakest. That's a sense that we're touching on this hypocrisy because it's key for us to actually be true brethren, to be mindful that we're not walking in hypocrisy within ourselves or in the sight of others. <coughs> and again, excuse me, again, 
taking heed to what we speak. The tongue is a powerful thing. Right. Words have a great effect. James chapter 1, verse 26, please. Any man among, if any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. So uh, all our works mean nothing if we cannot bridle our tongue. Because the tongue is a powerful thing. Can you speak up? Read James <laughs> chapter 3, verse 2, <laughs> please. For many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man. And able also to bridle the whole body. So that's essential for us, brothers. Knowing to keep to be mindful not to offend in word and it's important because we have to give account for everything we speak as well can you read matthew 12 verse 36 and 37 but i say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment for by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned Amen. So, being this was to understand how to be a brother in truth. You see how we have to walk, speak truth with love one to another. We get understanding of how to interact with one another, how to maintain peace amongst each other by submitting ourselves one unto another in humility. And we also got to understand how not to be condemning towards one another, but objective. And each man ought to bear another brother's burden being long-suffering towards brethren while also working out our own salvation with fear and trembling, judging ourselves, proving our own selves, learning the law and the fruits to examine ourselves to ensure that we are attaining unto Christ, and also being mindful of our words and staying, being ready to forgive towards one another. These are essential to avoid hypocrisy and walk in love and be brothers in truth. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Anything else, Brother Zachma? Hello? Zachma? I'm here. I'm sorry. Oh. It's okay. We good to go? Uh I was looking for a verse. It was a verse that talked about the tongue, how the tongue was um, like the most dangerous thing or something like that. Um, that was James. Tell me, like, you can't, you can't, sh the oar, like, it's like a ship unruly mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, it's, I think it's James chapter three or maybe chapter one, somewhere there. <laughs> You all right? I just need something to drink my throat. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then it talks about how they put the, the bridle on the horse's mouth and all that. Oh, that's right here. Yeah, James 3. Um, it says, yep, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, James 3 and 3 said, Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which, thou, which though they be so great, and are driven of forced winds, yet are they turned about with every small, are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and set upon fire the course of nature, and it, and 
it is set on fire of hell. And every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath not tamed and hath not been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Wherewith bless we Elohim our fa- even the Father, and wherewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of Elohim. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Do the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. And it's interesting because usually when it comes to people having an issue with one another, it's usually something that they said one to another. And that's why I wanted to go into that, seeing that we're sitting here trying to figure out how to be brethren, how to commune amongst one another in peace. You have to really guard your tongue. Um, Our tongue sends out blessings and curses. The guile of the tongue, the double-mindedness of the tongue, our heart and our tongue, that's how you truly getting those two together, figuring out how to truly be sincere and how to be honest. Those things are what's going to build a strong relationship amongst the brethren and amongst the body of Christ in general. Uh, you have anything on that, Brother Cotterfall? I know. I'm dragging this on a little bit. <laughs> no, I thought it was well said. Man. It is essential to have that in one accord, in the heart and the tongue. For the heart to be sincere and the tongue to reflect that sincerity, that is a process brethren have to work out within themselves so that they may have a true relationship with another brother. Because a person, we went over the scriptures how a person can speak fair, but deceit is in their heart. So it's more than just speaking fair words, but to get to the place where your heart is actually simplistic without guile and love towards each person and then your tongue will reflect that and that's a process of yache being formed in us hence we have to guard our tongues and pay attention to what we're saying as we're growing in the faith so that we may be trained in how to speak to one another in love Amen. So that's, very, that's very essential and then that yache has to build build in you that's why he said, if you be in the Lord, the Lord will show you, will give you a friend. Yes. Because the Lord that actually builds that in you. He builds that He builds that relationship. He builds that, that trust in you where somebody will trust you and somebody will see that the inner man in you. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. How to be a brother. Uh, if you if definitely um if you haven't watched the other two lessons, please go back and watch those lessons. We we um this is not just for the men. As you can see, the things that we went into today, it can really help the women too. So um yeah. just because it says men series, please don't put it aside, ladies, um uh sisters, please don't put it aside. Uh, it, it's very much good information for the whole body. So um with a higher keep us. Um yeah. is there anything else, Brother Casa for before we get off? It's essential for the sisters because the women the mothers have authority over the sons, so they have to teach their sons how to be men. So it's good to understand it. So let me teach them the right way. And being quite frank, the women have an issue with bridling their tongue just as much as men. So um, it's this is 
this is one of the major things, oh, when we get into the sisters. This is one of the major things that the sisters fall into where they can't have good relationships. It's because of the tongue and the heart. So, yes, yes, indeed. Guile is very much real amongst the sisters and and double-mindedness. So all this stuff applies. I mean, we're all we're all in tough case. It's just some things are more. Um, um, what's the word? Um, prevalent. Prevalent or broadened? Uh, I, I was going to say broadened, but some things are more magnified when it comes to the sisters. So um, I have to be gracious. To, to to heal us all where we can actually all be sincere one to another and actually dwell in, in peace with one another. Amen. I know we're holding everybody up. Uh, we hope everybody enjoys the rest of the Shabbat today. Uh, we just <laughs> definitely this is just a big a big discussion for for us because um, a lot of people don't know how to be brothers or how to deal with one another in truth because of everything that we've learned in the world, uh, you know, what we learn, what love is, and what we learn how the, the, the status quo of of dealing with your friends or your brothers or your sisters, we've been really, um, um, what's a good word for it? Misguided. Great, yeah, misguided. We've been really misguided. I don't know why I was about to say subjugated, but uh, I, I don't think that's the right <laughs> word. <laughs> misguided was definitely better. So um, yes, we we have to we have to relearn, rebuild. Yeah, yeah. That's what this series is about: having a new mindset, a new approach. Through Christ, actually. All right. All right. You don't have anything else, brother? Cost of I'm gonna go ahead and call it a call it a lesson. Yes. Catch you on the next one, brothers right. and sisters. All right. If you have any questions, please send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail dot com, or write in the chat below, or or write on the comment section. Um, we always enjoy you guys' questions and comments. So please, if there's anything that you want us to pray for you about, please send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail dot com. We're always willing to pray for the for the body and for the brethren. And may I just keep us all. May Allah's speed be upon us. Ciao. Um.